<laughs> and I'm going to just do some serious teaching tonight. Uh, I'm excited about having altars. Yes. Amen. Amen. So turn with me to Exodus chapter 27, beginning with verse 1. When you got it, say amen. 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 All right, the amen's have it. So we're going to move on with the rest of y'all better or not. <laughs> and thou shalt make an altar of sheet of wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square, and the height thereof shall be three cubits. Thou shalt make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof. His horns shall be of the same, and thou shalt overlay it with brass. And thou shalt make his pans to receive his ashes and his shovels and his basins and his flesh hooks and his fire pans. All the vessels thereof shalt thou shalt make of brass, and thou shalt make for it a great of network of brass, and upon the net shalt thou make four brazen rings in the four corners thereof. And thou shalt put it under the compass of the altar beneath that the net may be even to the midst of the altar, and thou shalt make staves for the altar, staves of sheet of wood, and overlay them with brass. And the staves shall be put into the rings, and the staves shall be upon the two sides of the altar to bear it. Hollow with boards shalt thou make it, as it was showed thee in the mount, so shall they make it. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the plan for the altar that was going into the tabernacle, and we haven't really begun to study on the tabernacle, but we're going to study the altar for a little bit tonight. Amen. So I want to teach just from this subject the purpose and power of an altar. Amen. The purpose and power of an altar. Hallelujah. Well, let's just ask the Lord to help us tonight. God, I give you glory. Lord, I want to thank you for your love to us tonight. God, I want to magnify your name. God, I'm asking you that you would move into this place right now, God. Lord, that you would anoint our lips of clay and help us, God, to teach your word tonight, God. Lord, I want us to open our understanding tonight, God. Open the understanding of this people, God. Uh, Lord, uh, about your word, we'll give you the praise, the glory, the honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. And hopefully, I'm not going to wander around off of the stage tonight too much because I'm not used to the altars being there. <laughs> I might end up face first on the floor. So. <laughs> Amen, because I do preach with my eyes closed, but I know where everything's at up till now. Amen. So, in this scripture that I read in your hearing, amen, God was giving, I don't know about y'all, but I'm hot. Hallelujah. Amen. God was giving instructions on the construction of the tabernacle. And this tabernacle was going to be, of course, made out of the, the skins, the ram skins, and all these good things, and the beaver skins and everything. But he began to give Moses the plan for the tabernacle. He gave him the plans for two altars. Did you know there were two altars in the tabernacle? Most people only remember one. Amen. Hallelujah. There was one that was in the courtyard of the tabernacle, and this is the one that we just read about. This is the one we're going to spend most of our time on tonight. Amen. This particular altar was known as the altar of sacrifice. Amen. It was also known as altar of the Holocaust. Amen. And that was before the Holocaust ever came to be. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As Moses gave him plans for these two altars, the second altar was the one that was inside. And uh, if you know anything about the layout of the tabernacle, there was the holy place and then the most holy place and then the holiest of holies, which was the third room. And it was behind the veil. Well, in the holy, the most holy place, amen, right next to the veil, there stood another altar, and this altar only contained incense. It was a small altar, and it was overlaid with gold. Amen. This one that I read about just now actually stood in the courtyard outside 
of the tabernacle and uh, it was quite tall it was three cubits tall about six foot tall and so they had to actually they couldn't the bible said they were not to build steps up to it amen so history tells us that they built a ramp of dirt up to that altar so that the priest could go up to that altar and minister amen so let's go a little further genesis chapter 8 verse 20 amen and this is the first place that altars are mentioned in the bible and of course uh, you you know adam and eve and and the situation with their sons uh, cain and abel brought their substance and they offered it but the bible doesn't say there was an altar involved Amen. This is the first place that an altar is mentioned is in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. The Hebrew word for altar is misbia. I'm not sure it's E-B-Z-I-M. You pronounce that. Okay. Ibsen. <laughs> from a verbal root meaning to slaughter the Greek renders this word as to a a place of sacrifice in the developed temple ritual the same word is used for both the altar of holocaust and the altar of incense thus an altar is a place where sacrifice is offered even if it is not an event involving slaughter so it the altar of incense and the altar of sacrifice were two different things amen the altar of sacrifice was a place of death amen it was a, it was a beautiful altar it was gold and these altars we've got here are beautiful tonight brother brother dave did a great job on putting these together and, and made some really beautiful altars and some unique altars amen uh, the thing about the altar was uh, that was built in the tabernacle, uh, the one that was on the outside, it was pretty to look upon. It was brass, uh, which would look like gold in, in the daylight sun. Uh, it probably shined and was beautiful. Amen. But at the same time, it was an ugly thing. Amen. Because it was a place of death. Amen. It was a place where... Uh, people would bring animals and they would be sacrificed and uh, if you've ever read the ritual uh, you need to go back if you're reading through the Bible you've already read it I mean you've already been through there uh, you know that uh, that sacrifice ritual was not something you really would want to be around it wasn't a very pretty thing amen as the priest would slaughter that animal he would cut its throat and drain its blood and then there were certain rituals where they would actually apply the blood to the tips of their ears or to their great toes or and uh, that blood was applied to the horns of the altar amen as a, a sacrifice for your sins and they were rolled ahead of here uh, the sins were never forgiven they were just rolled ahead at that altar amen but it was a place of sacrifice amen and, and in this instance where noah uh, offered unto God, uh, amen, this sacrifice. Notice in the following scriptures, amen, the first thing that Abraham did when God provided him a place to dwell was to establish an altar, Genesis 12, verses 6 through 8. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, under the land, the plain of Morah. And the Canaanite was then in the land, and the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto thy seed will I give this land and there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him and he removed from thence now look he already had, had stopped and he had already camped out and he the first thing he did was build an altar amen but then the Bible said he moved he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent having Bethel on the west and Heidi on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So again, amen, in two scriptures, he has already built two altars. Hallelujah. 
It's simply because that Abram understood the relevance of sacrifice. Amen. He understood. And this was way before the time that God had placed in Moses' hands. Uh, amen. The, the tabernacle plan. This was before uh, Moses had come on the scene and had begun to uh, put together the things that God wanted. Amen. As far as worship was concerned. And uh, it, it, it seemed to be that every time Abram stopped and set up camp, he built an altar. Hallelujah. Amen. It just goes to tell us that wherever you set up your house at, hallelujah, wherever your camp is set up, amen, I don't care if you camp in a tent on the river. We had a river. Amen. It, it doesn't matter if you want to camp out on the dry lake bed down here. Amen. Wherever you are at and whatever you call your home, there needs to be an altar associated there. Hallelujah. Now, I, I'm not advocating... Uh, Satanism by any means, but uh, when we were pastoring in Wells, we, we had a little incident occurred, and one of the ladies uh, that was in our church actually cleaned apartments, and I, I had talked to them quite a bit about the witchcraft and the Satanism and the occult that was in that town, so they were well aware of it, and one day she called me and she said, I want you and your wife to come over here. I'm cleaning an apartment. And the young lady that has moved out of the apartment, I had already told them that was into witchcraft and was involved in some things. And so sure enough, they, we, my wife and I went over there and uh, she had uh, a big strange painting on the wall that she had done under the influence of drugs. And it was, uh, it was a big fire and all throughout the flames of fire, you could see different human beings and different uh, creatures that she had painted in. And, uh, just really some gory looking stuff. But then she said, now come here, I want to show you something. And she opened the closet and uh, she said, when I started cleaning this up, right here on the floor was a pentagram. And then there was an altar in here, right here in this closet that was built and had the candles and all the paraphernalia there uh, that a Satanist and, uh, and somebody involved in witchcraft would use to contact their God. And I thought, how horrible that is. Not that she had an altar to Satan, but that we don't have an altar built in our house. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and I understand the Bible said, you know, we've got to have a prayer closet. You know, that's not talking about a literal closet, but these folks were so involved in the occult and so involved in their worship of Satan that they had actually went in and built an altar to him. What an indictment against us that have the truth. What an indictment against us that know God and the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That we who have claimed to be the children of the light, amen, don't even have a place we call an altar at our house, much less actually have a real altar built for him. I'm out of God. And so, I, I, you know, I don't know why, what the stigma is. If we're afraid of it because an altar is a, a scary place. It really is. It, it, it's a place of, and people are afraid of an altar. Amen. You don't believe it, you give an altar call and say, okay, we need everybody come to the altar. And you see how many of them hang onto those pews and they'll grip them. I mean, you'll see their knuckles turning white back there because they're, they, they want to let go of sin, but yet at the same time, there's something fearful about an altar. Why? Because this is the place where you're going to die out. Yes. Amen. amen. This is the place where you're going to kill your flesh. And once you kill your flesh, amen, then God can have control. Hallelujah. Amen. My, my wife and I, when we first got here, that was one of the very first things we saw. We don't have altars. And we don't have a baptistry. Yes, my God, we got to have a church with altars and a baptistry. What's wrong with this? Amen. Something's wrong with this picture. we got to be able to see people die and see them resurrected. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Jesus, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. Yes. I want to see them buried in baptism, but I want to see them die at an altar. First. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I want to see, see tears on that altar. I, I don't want these altars to stay clean and shiny like this. I want tears on those altars. I want people that are weeping before God as they're giving their heart to Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Because this is a place of death. It's a place
place of sacrifice. It's where you give up yourself to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 29, verses 10 through 13. And thou shalt cause a bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the bullock. And thou shalt kill the bullock before the Lord by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt take the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with thy finger and pour all the blood in beside the bottom of the altar. Thou shalt take all of the fat that cover the inwards and the caul that is above the liver and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them and burn them upon the altar. It's not a pretty place. As beautiful as it looks from a distance with the sun shining on it and the, the bronze shining out like gold, that brass shining like gold, and they cleaned the altar. They kept it spotless. They kept it clean. Amen. And as beautiful as it was to look upon, when you got right down to it, amen, it was nasty. It was bloody. There was blood on it. There was gore on it as as they burned that sacrifice unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to have an altar in our lives. Amen. Amen. It's not just a place to die out to sin when you originally get the Holy Ghost, but it's a place to stay died out to sin. Hallelujah. It's a place to stay dead to sin. Amen. That, and we don't have to do this. Thank God we don't. Amen. Every year they had to bring a sacrifice back to roll their sins ahead a year. You see, it was an ongoing process. They never stopped all of their life. They had to do it every year. And you bring that bullock or bring that ram or bring that sheep or bring those doves, amen, whatever they could afford back to the Lord, amen, and let them be sacrificed before the Lord for their sins. And all it did was roll them ahead a year. Amen. So... The altar was a place to die out to sin. And it was a place to meet and to worship God. Now, there was a fire that burned on that altar. Let's read Leviticus 6, verses 12 through 14. Verse 12 said, And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it, and he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Hmm. Now, I want you to understand something. God didn't keep the fire going. It wasn't God's responsibility. He didn't see something mysteriously happening where fire from heaven. Now, it did do that one time. It fell one time and consumed everything off the altar. But you didn't see the fire of God. It wasn't like there was a pile of light that every time the fire would start to burn out, God would go poof and this fire would just start up. No. It was built by human hands. Human hands had to make sure there was a continual fire on the altar. One, to keep the altar ready for sacrifice. Sometimes the fire was needed in an instant's notice. Yeah, for, for instance, this altar here, these are wood. Amen. There, there ain't going to be no fire on them. Not no fire fire. Amen. But we need a spiritual fire on these altars. Yes, Hallelujah. And at the end of this message, we're going to dedicate these altars, and we're going to lay hands. Everybody here is going to come up, and we're going to anoint them. We're going to lay hands on them. We're going to dedicate them. And I want you folks to help me build a fire in these altars. Yes, spiritual. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want us to keep a fire burning so because you don't ever know, amen, when somebody's going to come through those doors and... And they're going to be so hungry for God that they're not even going to stop. They're just going to run straight up to the front and, and fall in one of these altars. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a reason the fire needs to be continually burning. Let me, let me just let me show you what happened in, in, in their day and hour, okay? Number 16, verse 41 through 50. Now, you got to understand, 
what's happening